Now just you listen to me, Sonny. If you're going to play like this and you're going to mess around with us when we're trying to build something here at this football club, then you're not going to be in the team for the foreseeable future. You're going to be in the under-21s. Now get out of my office. Hello everybody and welcome back to Ois in Source. This is episode 5 of our Football Manager Save involving Ugrita, the Swedish club based in Göteborg. And yes, things have kicked off on this series. We're into the new season now and it's turbulent times ahead for the football club. Let's begin with that team meeting, shall we? So, Luis Pedro, as you can see, has been dropped to Ugrita reserve team. Now, he's one of our most important players. But as you can see, his morale is very poor and he's extremely unhappy. He's unhappy at being placed in the under-21s. He thinks Batista Mendy should be reassured of his place in the team. He's been complaining to teammates about replacements that have been signed and he doesn't feel the previous chat went very well. And I can tell you one thing, the previous chat didn't go very well. In fact, it went terribly. The reason for this is because this has been boiling for a while now in the team meeting earlier in the season, as we began and came back from pre-season, as you can see there, Pedro is one of the players who was not happy with the business done in the transfer window. He was unhappy with players signed and he felt threatened by players in his position. We had another meeting about it and he was talking about the arrival of Arnel Armehodzic, who he felt threatened his place in the team. To be honest, this is not really what I would expect from a senior member of the team. I mean, I don't know what your reaction to this is, guys, but what's that about? So, you know, he's been, you know, he's been all right this season. He's not been amazing, but he play, he's played some games. It's, it's not even as if he's really lost his place in the side, to be fair. He didn't play the first game of the season. But, you know, he's played in every, he's featured in every match since. Uh, started against Degafors and the win against Degafors. So I don't really see where his concerns are, are coming from. Um, but yeah, it all kicked off. If we, as you can see here, we'll go to the schedule and we'll update you. We talked on the last episode about coming back for one of these three games, no shopping, Ostersunds or Hammerby. Remember, you can watch episode four back on uh, Twitter, uh, sorry, on the YouTube channel, which you can have a look at and get involved with. The YouTube channel, Just Football, uh, and also the Nordic Football Podcast. But yeah, we decided to come back for this Ostersunds game because if you look at the results here, Last game we brought you, of course, was the first game of the new season. A pretty creditable 2-2 draw with Ordebro, which we were reasonably happy with. But uh, yeah, we then played Malmo. Didn't go too well. Champions Malmo, we lost to them 2-0. I think that's fairly understandable, especially when you look at the game itself and what happened. We had a player sent off after 47 minutes. You know, we were doing okay. We were hanging in there against the champions, Magnus Wolf Eichram was sensational in this match and really tore us apart. We looked okay, but then, yeah, we couldn't. Once Nwusa got sent off, he uh, he was a player who got sent off for a second yellow card, and that really turned the game, to be honest. We were hanging on from that point on, and Malmo went on to score. I'll show you the goals here very quickly. Hit the post, it came back. as he, We were hanging on at this point. Wolf, Christensen, and that was the opening goal. And then, with 10 men, last minute of the game, we threw men forward to try and get an equaliser, but unfortunately Malmo carved us open. Joe, Inga, Birgit, with that goal to seal it. Wasn't too disappointed there. What can you do against Malmo? That's you can't expect us to be beating Malmo at this stage of the uh, save. But Dega Falls, we got our first win of the campaign. Very happy with that. As you can see, this was the formation we played. We had Patrick up front and Guet Svensson, but it wasn't Patrick who uh, our Brazilian, our star Brazilian. It wasn't him that made the impact. It was another Brazilian who came on for him, Lucas Fernandes. New signing that we uh, got in the. Window from Fluminense, as we mentioned on episode two, I think, when we met the squad. He came in as a free transfer and got his first goal. So let's take a quick look at the highlights from this one. 
to show you the goals. It was really important to beat Degafors because we do need points on the board and we'd gone eight games without a win. That was Fernandez, a lovely hit. Nguet with the assist. Yes, we'd gone eight games without a win from the time we won the title back in October to now. And that was Carlson to Armin Hodzic. 2-0. Lovely headed goal. Maybe that's why Luis Pedro is feeling a bit salty with uh, his defensive partner there scoring goals. Degerfors came back into it with a goal to make it 2-1 in the 87th minute. But we held out Patrick Broberg there at Regen. But we held out and we got ourselves our first win in Osvenskan. Yeah, we'd been eight, eight games without winning, obviously including the Swedish Cup as well. And then the first you know, game of, of the season, the first two games of the season, that totaled eight. It was nearly a club record, but we managed to hold that off. And then catastrophe against no shopping away. A 5-0 defeat. And this is where it all began. The team meeting, all the recriminations and all the uncertainty with the club. I'll show you a couple of the goals. I mean... I don't think we've got time to watch all five. That's how many it was. You know, the ratings of some of the players as well was just woeful. And really, Norshipping, they're probably the second best team in the league, maybe, but maybe the best, along with Malmo, in Osvenskan this season on this save. And they just ripped us apart, to be honest. It was pretty embarrassing by the end. Mobo Carlson. And yeah, our team was dishevelled. You know what? I'm not even going to show you all the goals, but there was a second. It's painful even watching it back. But yeah, anyway, enough of that. Well, we'll show you one more just to give you a grim watching for any Orgolita fans here. We just got torn apart. As you can see, we tried to play deep and structured, played a counter-attacking style, but it just didn't work. Midfield, we were swamped. Mobile Carson again ripped us apart and the flanks as well just crosses. Lena was struggling and yeah, enough of that. I can't watch any more of those goals. But yeah, if you just look at the ratings from this game, we really had poor performances from everyone really. Some of the ratings were, I think, a little bit harsh. I'll give you an example. Mendy here, just on reviewing it, he got 6.1. But if you look at it, OK, passes completed, not great, 54%. But he won 16 headers and he won one of his two key tackles and 17 interceptions which is you know I thought maybe it values more than a 6.1 but yeah across the board really really bad ratings Pedro we took him off at half time and we had words with him at half time in front of the, all the players and it all kicked off and yeah Armin Hodzic was poor everyone was poor really no one came out of this game with any credit and even worse Sebastian Carson who's been one of our best players in recent games Tore his ankle ligaments and it's out for seven to nine weeks. So we are really going to miss him, the former Inter Milan player. So yeah, it's going to be, it's not, it was not the news we wanted, uh, especially with Mbusu having obviously missed a game through suspension with his red card. So what we did, morale was really bad after this match. And I mean really bad. Everyone was on a sort of poor or fairly poor or very poor average at best but we called the team meeting and we called the lads in and we said listen it's going to be a long season you know we're going to do our best but we haven't started that badly and just to keep your chins up we've played two of the toughest teams in the division in Malmo and North Shopping so we can't really you know I felt like we can't really feel too bad about ourselves but um, everyone was happy except Pedro who said came to me afterwards and said I'm not I'm not happy at being dropped from the first team. I want an explanation. And I am not happy with Arma Hodzic. Now, I'm not having that. If you've got to be in this squad, you've got to be competitive and willing to compete. So he is gone from the first team squad for now. He will be in our under-21s. I don't know why he's still there, to be honest. But anyway, yeah, as you can see, he's in the under-21s. And he will not form part of our plans for the next few weeks. So this show uh, today, we're just going to get into this game against Ossesens. It's a key match. Uh, from my point of view, I think the next game after that will be EF Core Jotterburg, the derby, the massive derby in May. But this game could really define the flavour of our season. A big defeat and then we've got three really tough games. Hammerby away, Elsborg away, Bromopoikana. 
Uh, a win at least could give us some breathing space. So it's an essential game. This is the table. Obviously we're 13th at the moment, which is where the media predicted us to finish. So at the moment at least we're kind of matching expectations. But I don't want to match expectations. We want to we wanna do better than that. Although I'd take 13th now if I'm if I'm honest. But yeah, Osterson's just above us. And then, as you can see, we've got Elsborg, as I said. Uh, we've got Hammerby. So, look, we've played, we're going to be playing three of the top teams. Malmo and Elsborg and uh, North Shopping are the top three at the moment. And they are... We've played them all at least, so at least, you know, we, we can have a little bit of respite. But for today, we're going to play this Ostersons game. So, this was the lineup from the last match. And... Things are going to change now. I think that's why Pedro's there, because I haven't taken him out of the squad yet. But, yeah, I'm going to have to make some changes to this now. So, the question is, to what extent do we make changes? So, let's just go through it now and, you know, take you through it as well. Maybe, um, you know, I've asked you before, guys, leave us a comment on YouTube if you can, or give us a like. I'd be very keen to know who you think should play. We've brought Felix Ajay back in recently. Uh, I'm going to give him his first start of the season. The Ghanaian, a bit more experience at left back. I'm going to give Ruben Gatta a rest. Uh, Luis Pedro is not going to play now for the foreseeable future. I'm going to give Johan Anderson a game. Batista Mendy is also unhappy, but I'm not really sure what he's got to be unhappy about, if I'm honest. OK, guys, so this is the side that's going to play against... Ostersunds, we're going to go for Hopkins, Mendy and Johan Anderson. So a bit more of a changes in defence. Armin Hodzic will be dropped. The player that Luis Pedro seems to be having some beef with. Luis Pedro is now in our under-21s. He will not play. Lina keeps his place despite having a very poor game. Felix Ajay comes in for his first game of the season. Alexander Svensson. Now this is a player that has really been one of the highlights so far. Look at his improvement rate. He's really improving. Only 18, looking very, very good there. 6.93 rating in three matches. He is looking like he could be a stalwart of our midfield this season. I rested him against North Shopping, but he will come back into the team. Unwusu will partner him, although he didn't have the best of games in Wusu, did he, against North Shopping? But I do quite like his tenacity. He's, he's done all right. I'm going to put Makumbu on the bench for his first time as well, just as a backup. And then Nguet has been a very good player for us so far. Three games, four games, sorry, one goal, one assist, one player of the match. He keeps his place. Tim stolt Hermanson will come in for Jokerez, his first start of the season. Chance for him to impress in Osvenskan. Very talented youngster amongst our ranks. Let's see how he can cope. And then I'm going to keep Lucas Fernandez up front. Patrick is on the bench, our star Brazilian. Hasn't quite done it yet, no goals, one assist. So... He's going to stay on the bench, even though he is a sensational talent stats-wise. So we've got Jokerez, Patrick on the bench. We've got a young 17-year-old striker on the bench. Makumbu, Arme Hodzic, Vicklande Lundqvist and Adam Anderson. That's enough homegrown players. And that's what we're going to go for. So let's see how we get on. Ajay is lacking match sharpness. We've got Vicklande Lundqvist on the bench there, who can play as a left wing-back if he tires. So that's fine by me. And let's get into this game against Ossesons. Now, how are they doing? Who's the manager these days? Andreas Bert Brandstrom. Okay. Graham Potter's left. Where is he in this, on this game? He's nowhere. Interesting. I'm going to add him to the staff shortlist. Maybe he wants to... Be our assistant manager, although I highly doubt that. But uh, yeah, he's no longer Ostersons, so that's an interesting one. But yeah, let's get into this game. That's the lineups. So that's what they're going for. Jamie Hopcut there, who's been on the Nordic Football Podcast. If you look back through our archives, we've interviewed him before. I'm going to make sure we tackle him hard, as he can be quite creative. Assistant can take the team talk. Yeah, I'm hoping for a much better performance here, but to be honest, I don't quite know what to expect from this game, so let's see how we get on. Guys, 
Guys, I'm interested to hear what you think about our performances so far. What do you think in terms of the players, the attendances? Do you like this camera angle? All that kind of stuff. I, I like it, as I mentioned in a previous show. I like the fact that you can see the whole pitch. You can see the spacings in terms of our 3-4-3 uh, three, three formation. Five at the back at times. I like that element to it. We're going for hard tackling. We're going to try and control the play here a bit more. Not too bothered about possession, but we do try and spread the ball wide. Svensson on free kicks. Not many highlights so far. Here's Johan Anderson. What can he do on his first start of the season? Nguet, our key man, and Lucas Fernandez. There is the goal, his third of the season. Nguet to Fernandez. That is the key combination of the season so far. Great cross in, near post. And it's 1-0 to Ois. A lot of people have asked why we call this show Ois in Source. I thought it was a, a nice pun on Chinese food, but uh, not many people have got that. I couldn't really think of anything else that goes with Ois. But uh, yeah, if you have any ideas, maybe we can rename the show. Anyway, 1-0, Mendy. Pedro's there in the stand somewhere watching after his outburst. To Lina. And Gwe oh, he has to score that. Pretty encouraged with what we've seen so far. Good set bounce back from the, that 5 0 defeat. Obviously, heads could have dropped. I think the team meeting has worked really well. We needed that team meeting just to clear the air with everyone and let them know we're not doing that bad. We have had really hard games and things can get better. He's in Wusu now. He's very good at. He's very good at through balls. And Nguet scores. All agree to a red hot, according to the commentator. And that is a fantastic goal. Svensson. Unwusu. Nearly dropped him. But that is a fantastic through ball to Nguet. And it's 2 0. We really need a win in this game simply because of our coming fixture list. Hammerby away next. Some really tough games. This would just ease the pressure a little bit. What settings do you have, guys, when you play the game? Do you do you look at the in-game lead table? Are you bothered about that kind of stuff? Mendy there, winning the header. And Wusu, he's loving it. Mr. Success himself. Success by name, success by nature. Can he bring us success? And it's still live here. And nearly, they got they nearly got through. See the latest scores in the offense. Gan Hacken doing all right. Half time. Really happy with that performance so far. I'm not going to get involved. I'm letting the assistant manager give the team talk. After our team meeting, I ruffled a few feathers, and I think it's best to sit back at the moment and just observe. So I'm going to keep observing. Good performances all round. Stolt Hermansen looking for maybe a little bit more from him, but. Uh, First game of the season, I'm not not too concerned. He's only young. If we win this, we go up to sixth. So that would be nice. The ambitions still remain the same. Can we, we, we just need to stay in the division this year. I've already got scouts looking at new players. We've decided to scout the Norwegian and Swedish leagues this season, so we'll have people watching those games and Maybe we can pick up some bargains from those leagues and, and progress. But this year is a challenge for everyone to prove themselves. Who can stay? Who can cut it at Osvenskan level? And who maybe do we need to move on? Svensson, what a ball that is from the 18-year-old Sostol Heimansson. I'm really, really liking Svensson. He, he could even be captain material one day. The 18-year-old, here he is again. Look at that for a ping. Oh, he is a really, really... I mean, I might have to rename him Cesc Fabregas at this rate. Mendy with a foul. But yeah, I'm very, very happy with this performance so far. Hopkins, captain, the American. 
he's not playing that well, but maybe we need his leadership skills in this game. Leadership 14, he's 32, the American. And it's bringing us what we need. There he is with a slide tackle. Doesn't quite win it, though. Yes, that's well defended. Mendy again. I've kept the same formation. I did think about... We, we moved it to a 4-4-2 against No Shopping because we were just so bad um, that we just had to switch it up a bit. Didn't work. In fact, I think it got even worse. But um, there's Mendy again. He's a rock at times. And he's laid it to him quit. And the counter is on. And here is the star man and quit. His man's on a yellow card and he's put the cross in. Start here, Manson. Puts it wide. Here is Stott Hermanson, by the way. I'll show you him in a minute if we can. His stats are pretty terrible. In fact, they're pants. But he is a good player. His Hopcut is broken away. That is a big miss from Jamie Hopcut. Yeah, here's Stott Hermanson's statistics. He's 19. Valued at 40k. He's not, not great at all, are they? But he is a very, very good player. Uh, last season, he was a key man for us. He was in the... Team of the season in the uh, Super Etten. That's how good he was. And this is his first chance with Jokeres benched. They're just starting to get a little bit of traction, so I'm going to make a change. And Gwet's looking motivated. Everyone's looking motivated and sharp. Maybe dropping Pedro has had the right effect. You know, this is the sort of bold decision that maybe was needed to ruffle the feathers of the squad because there was a bit of complacency setting in. Uh, I'm not, you know what, I'm going to leave it as is. I don't see any need to change things. But now I am going to change it. With a few minutes to go, 15 minutes to go. I'm going to let Stolt Hammonds never rest. No, you know what? I'm going to take Svensson off for Makumbu. Let's give him his first appearance of the season. Makumbu's a, he's a, he is quite a good player in the making, but he, because he's not homegrown. And there is the third goal. Johan Anderson, the centre-back. Well, Pedro, that could put his place in even more jeopardy, the Angolan, because another centre-back has scored. And it's from just outside the box, just on the edge of it. Poor goalkeeping, who is that? Poor keeping, really, but I don't care. It's 3-0. I'm going to make... Two more changes. Let's give a few, let's give a rest to a few players. I'm going to bring on our young, talented player Joseph Limburg, the 17-year-old, who is developing all the time. You may remember him from past episodes. There he is, the young kid. Let's give him a bit of a game time, and also Vic Lander Junkvis for Felix J. I'm very happy with Felix J. I think he's just what we needed. Some experience there, the Ghanaian. First game of the season, he's a solid player for us, just absolutely solid. And I'm happy with his performance, he will keep his place. Which means Ruben Gatta, who I said is our new Patrice Evra, that means he's at jeopardy. He's not even on the bench today. But yeah, I was just saying before, Makumbu is a good player for us, but because he's uh, counts as homegrown, he doesn't count as homegrown, sorry, uh, he's from the Congo. It means that I have to often leave him out of the squad entirely to, to match the nine homegrown players that you need to have in your matchday squad. So he is a bit unlucky at times. And there you go. It's all over. Ois have won it 3-0. I'm really, really... I'm surprised in a way. I didn't expect us to win. I thought it would be a tough game. I'm going to just tell them that. Very pleased with the result and the performance. Everyone's delighted, everyone looks calm and motivated, that's what we need. We need confidence to come back after that North Shopping defeat. That's exactly what we kind of needed really. And uh, here's a question for the media, Lars Broman. I mean, they do ask some obvious questions, don't they? Am I happy with the win? He's got great respect for me, so I have great respect for him. And I'll give him the answer he wants. Player of the match, success in Wusu. Two assists, the man. 
and for a hundred thousand, hundred and ten thousand pounds, he's looking quite a bargain already from Hammerby. The stats will be added after the game, obviously, but uh, yeah, pretty happy all around with that. Key Boom's done well. Johan Andersson's come in and done really well. The centre back, Swedish centre back. My scouts think he could be, my coaching staff think he could be a, a really quality player. But I've never quite seen it, but maybe this is the beginning of his proving it. And Oppo and Gwet, probably our best player at this stage of the season so far. Look at him. He looks happy. And he scored today. So Fernandez and Gwet and Anderson assists for... Two for success in Wusu and one for Opengwet, so a goal and assist there. Really, really happy with that result. And that game sets us up nicely for, well, the season ahead. Because, where does that put us? Moves us to fit sixth in the table. What's Jens Gustafsson doing here? Okay, he's come to watch a lone player, good. We might be having a sniff around one of our players. But yeah, there you go. That's where we are. We've gone from 13th to 6th. A massive win in terms of just lifting the squad. Seven points now from five games, which I'm happy with. Two wins, one draw, two defeats. We've conceded 10, but we've scored seven. Happy with that. And here are the star players in the league at this moment in time. Mainly, well, look, the top four are all North Shopping players. And then Magnus Wolf. So, yeah, it just shows you how difficult our games were, which is why that team meeting was really important, I think, to let players know that not to get their heads down too much. So, success in Wusu, impressive form. So, yeah, that's it, really. Uh, we've got three assists now. We're going to end it here. Please, guys, give us a like or subscribe if you're enjoying the show. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. These are our fixtures coming up, so we're going to probably play out the next three games, four games, five games. Hammerby away, Elsborg away, Bromer Poikin away. Maybe you might stream one on Twitch if anyone wants to get involved. Twitch just football. Um, but yeah, I think we'll be probably back for the big derby, EFK Jotterberg, our massive Gothenburg rivals in May. Where will we be by then? I'm hoping, you know, if we can pick up sort of from the next five games, say five to five to ten points, you know, eight to ten points maybe, I'll be pretty happy. It's all about survival this season, so, you know, I'd be happy with that from, from 15 available points. And, yeah, I mean, a mid-table finish would be fantastic. We're above EF Core now. Let's see where we are when we come back. Thanks for watching, guys. Like I say, subscribe and like and get yourself on Twitter at JustFootball or at NordicFootPod. And we'll be back with more Oisin Source again very soon. So see you again, guys. Take care.